Hey guys, so you may remember that one of the very first things I showed you in rotation is how we can connect linear displacement delta x and angular or rotational displacement delta theta using a tiny equation. Well, there's two more equations that we can use to connect velocity and acceleration between linear and rotational. Okay, so let's check it out. All right, so we have these tiny equations that are going to link, that are going to connect, that are going to allow us to convert from one to the other between linear and rotational. Now linear, uh, we're also going to refer to linear as tangential, right? Linear tangential, both of these are going in a straight line. Um, going to connect from linear or tangential to rotational, which is also referred to as angular. So it's important that you know that these words are uh, have to mean the same thing, okay? So the linear variable is x and the rotation equivalent is delta theta. Okay, now from that we get that delta x is the change in position, the change in x, and delta theta is the change in angular or rotational position theta. And the way that delta x and delta theta connect is by this equation right here. We've used this. Similarly, v connects to its omega to its angular equivalent omega using a very similar equation. So delta x is r delta theta and v tangential this t here means um, tangential velocity is r omega okay and i want to point out that there's a pattern here this is the linear uh, the linear variable r and the rotational variable same thing here linear variable r rotational variable now i'm going to remove all these little circles so it's not messy. Same thing with A and alpha. A is going to be R, and if you see the pattern, the equivalent of V is W, the equivalent of A is alpha, okay? And this is also the tangential acceleration, okay? So these are the two new equations that we're going to be able to use. Now, when do they come up? Usually it's on a problem like this. You have a disc, and this disc spins with angular speed omega. Well, if you pick a point in this disk, right, a point here, and I want to know what is the velocity, the linear velocity of this point. Well, this point moves with linear velocity or tangential velocity that looks like this, vt. You might remember that when I have a point going around a circle, the point has tangential velocity and it also has um, centripetal acceleration. Well, it turns out that vt is connected to omega by this equation, vt equals r omega, which is a very, very, very useful relationship equation, okay? So let's keep going. Um, I want to quickly mention that there are four types of acceleration. I already mentioned two here. We have ac and um, actually I already mentioned three. We have ac, we have at, and we have alpha. There's a fourth one, but we're going to talk about that later. Um, I want to just be very clear here that this equation right here, at equals r alpha, refers to the tangential acceleration. Okay, It doesn't refer to the centripetal acceleration. It doesn't refer to the angular or rotational acceleration. Okay, So there's four types of acceleration. Most of them have two names. So it's going to be a mess, but I'll show you um, pretty soon, okay? A few more points here. Whenever you have a rigid body or a shape, so let's say this is a cylinder, right? Let's say this is a cylinder that spins around itself, okay? All rotational quantities, delta theta, omega, and alpha, are the same at every point. So let me show you this real quick, um, illustrate this a little bit. So let's imagine a line here. And then there's point, um, there's a little, imagine this is a huge disc and there's people on top of it or whatever, right? So you have a guy A over here on that point and guy B is over here. Now imagine that this disc spins from here to here, okay, to that point right there. Now guy A is going to be here and guy B is going to be here. Notice how they all spin on the same line, right? So if, if I'm here and you're here and this spins, we're still in the same place, right? We're moving together, okay? 
So our delta theta, our change in angle will be the same. All right? Because, and, and by the way, this happens even if we're not in the same line. It's just easier to see it if it's in the same line. Um, delta theta is the same. And because omega is defined in terms of delta theta, delta theta over delta t, omega is also going to be the same. And since omega is the same, alpha depends on omega, all these three things are the same, okay? Long story short, if you're in a circle, all the objects on top of a circle have the same delta theta as they move. Um, they're going to experience the same alpha and the same w. So all of the rotational quantities will be the same, okay? However, the linear speeds might be different since they depend on r, which is radial distance. Okay, or distance to the center. That's another way to think about it, okay? They might be different. So the best way to illustrate this is by doing an example and do a very straightforward one. So I have a wheel of radius eight, so let's draw this here. Um, let's put a little radius here. Radius of this wheel is eight meters. It spins around its central axis. Um, so what that means is that imagine a circle and imagine a, a sort of an invisible line through the circle, right? Um, an invisible line through the circle, and it's free to spin around that invisible line. So I'm going to draw this here. You don't have to draw it. Um, so I'm going to delete it. Imagine an imaginary line that goes through this thing, almost as if you stuck a thing through it, and then it's free to spin around that. Okay, that's what that means. So let's get this out of here. Um, Basically, it spins around its center, which is how these things always work, um, at 10 radians per second. So that's our omega is going to be um, 10 radians per second. We want to know the angular and linear speeds at different points. So I want to know at a point in the middle of the wheel, on the central axis, so we're going to call this point 1, um, at a distance 4 meters from the center, um, if the radius is 8 meters, 4 meters is halfway in. So I'm going to draw this here. Uh, this is point 2. And at the edge of the wheel, point 3. Okay? So the, what we want to know is we want to know V1, V2, and V3. And I want to know omega 1, omega 2, and omega 3. Okay? That's what it says. I want the angular, which is omega, and linear, V, speeds at these three points, okay? So, first thing is to realize that all these points have the same, because they're all on the same disk, they have the same omega, and that omega is the same omega as the disk, okay? So that's the first part. Omega one equals omega two, which equals omega three, which equals omega disk. So this is more of a conceptual to know that you, uh, to know if you know that. So all of these will be 10 radians per second. So please remember all of them are the same, and they are the same as the disk. If you're on top of a disk, you're spinning with the disk, you have the same omega. What about V1, V2, V3? This is going to be a little bit different. The point, the tangential or linear velocity of an object on a disk is given by V tangential, so V1 tangential, um, which is R omega. In this case, R1 omega 1. Now all these objects have v2t, I'm going to write this for all of them, r2 omega 2 and v3t is r3 omega 3. Now all these objects have the same omega but they have different r's which means they're going to have different v's. Okay, So let's calculate this real quick. Um, the first r here is how far from the center is that point. Remember, r is the distance to the center. The first point is at the center, at the middle of the wheel. What's the difference, the distance from the center to the center? Zero. So r1 is actually zero. So it doesn't really matter what this is, the answer will be zero. Okay? Um, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's go to the next one. r2 is at a distance of four meters from the center. So this is four, and omega is ten. So the answer is 40 meters per second. And this is at a distance 8. It's at the edge. W is 10. So this is 80 meters per second. 
Okay, so these are the answers. Let me talk about it real quick. Um, if you're at the edge, you move faster, right? So think about you and a friend in, inside of a uh, carousel that's spinning. And if you're at the edge, you're going to feel faster. You are, in fact, moving faster on the linear direction anyway. And you have a harder force, a stronger force pulling you to the middle. Okay, so if you're at the edge of a spin, um, you are faster. If you are dead at the center, right? If you could be in the center of a carousel and, the, and it's spinning, you're basically doing this, right? You're rotating in place and you have no V. Velocity is when you're moving sideways. When you're spinning in place, that's W, okay? So if you're spinning in place, um, as opposed to spinning sort of, um, you're just sort of doing this, spinning in place, as opposed to spinning like this, okay? So you spin, around yourself so you have no velocity only w okay and if you're at the edge you are um, faster okay that's it let's try the next example